to welcome to my channel. In my previous video, we removed a leaking eight-year-old A.O. Smith water heater. In today's video, we are gonna go ahead and replace it with a 50-gallon ream gas water heater that we picked up from Home Depot. And I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know to do the install the correct way to save some time and money. So let's go ahead and get into it. We would be honored if you would join us. Um, I stopped by Home Depot and we picked up a new ream water heater. And this is a 50 gallon tank we're gonna go with versus my old tank was 40 gallons. And this does have a nine year limited warranty in home and a two, two year full warranty parts and labor in home. This guy puts out 40,000 BTUs. Home Depot does offer professional installation if you wanna pay a professional to do it. Um, these are the dimensions here, 59 and a quarter tall by 21 and a half wide. So it should fit pretty much just like the one I had. And this has a pretty even decent amount of uh, instructions right on the box. It tells you exactly kind of what to do step by step. There are some items that are included. And so we'll unbox this here in a little bit and uh, really check it out. Looks like we just cut along the dotted line and then pull the top of the box off. Okay, so I've cut along the bottom of the uh, dotted line here. Let's remove the top of this box. A peek at this one, the uh, hot and cold, those connections are the same. The drain outlet is different for the, uh, if there's too much pressure, so I'm gonna have to do some different type of plumbing for this and incorporate that into my wall. So I'm just gonna buy a bunch of different joints and some PVC pipe for there. Got the Ream 50 gallon gas water tank unboxed. And what comes in the box? You get the, uh, the vent hood or the exhaust uh, vent. It's gonna go to the piping for uh, the exhaust outlet. Um, this is all your controls and stuff. Gas input, just like the other one. So that works exactly the same. Um, they got instructions here. I went ahead and um, basically just put a little two inch adapter to get the cold water hooked up so I can bring the hose in here. And, spray this whole area out because I had moss and like mildew and it was just really gross in here because um, it had been leaking for like two, three months. Got this all scrubbed down so we can set this back in and then we can begin the installation process. Did a quick trip to Lowe's and I spent like, what did I spend like 70 bucks? $63 on a bunch of different adapters so um, the water inlet lines on my old stuff was pretty heavily corroded. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but there's all kinds of corrosion inside these just from the last eight years of use. You can see inside there. So I just figured, well, I'm here, I might as well just replace it. So I got all new stuff. I bought all different types of PVC um, couplers. I bought cement. The output drain for the overpressurized is on the other side. So I bought a whole big piece of uh, PVC pipe because I'm gonna have to reroute this drain outlet um, down and around the front and then back out. Um, I bought a plug. That way I can just plug this T off right here and get rid of this. That way that makes that easier to go on. So let's uh, get the stand into the corner. Then we'll set the water tank heater up on top of that and then we'll get the straps in and then start doing the plumbing. If you haven't had the chance to watch the previous water heater removal video, I will have a tag in the upper right hand corner of the screen, but let's go ahead and get on to the install of the new one. No, it's wet, it's wet, it's wet, it's wet. I think what we'll do is I'm just gonna, we'll tip it forward a little bit. And you can use your front hand up here and then bottom hand down here. Ready, one, two, three. Okay, we've got the water heater on the stand. So now we can begin the part of putting the PVC threading adapter into this, doing the overflow plumbing outlet to here. We're gonna go ahead and get the straps around the tank and secured on the top and bottom. And then I'll work on doing probably my exhaust venting, or maybe I'll work on my water inlets. And 
And then we'll connect the gas here. So yeah, we'll get this all buttoned up. Super excited, my new tripod showed up. This is my uh, Manfrotto that I've been waiting for for a while. This has a uh, bunch of different like easy adjustments and just very compact and sturdy. This is what I'm going to be using out in the garage when I make content for my cars because my other cheap tripod broke after a couple of years. And between that tripod and this little handheld one I have, I can make all my content for my channel. This thing is uh, like a grip handle as well as you can set it up if you're doing something like low profile on the floor or vlogging with your camera on the desk. So I've already connected the lower strap. We're going to go ahead and connect the upper strap. Take a good look at the brackets. The little metal pieces just hook through and as you tighten that down, it clamps it down. I left these uh, lightly on there because I'm going to wait till I get the tank filled up underwater to make sure I'm not putting too much stress on those straps at the wall. So I'll tighten those down a little bit later. All right, so I've got where the gas inlet goes to the um, water heater. Um, before they had this big adapter on there, which made it really hard to screw it into the, the water heater because this would hit the tank. So I just bought myself a plug. So I can just plug it off just like that. And that'll work a lot easier. That way I've got my inlet to my connector with the plug. I could have even bought an elbow, but this I already had these parts. So I figured I'd save a little bit of money. This is like my compound or my pipe thread sealant. So I'm going to use that. It's designed specifically for gas. Um, then I'll use a little bit of spray water and soap to test the connection once I turn the gas on to see if there's any leaks. So that's that plug. It's going to work a lot better than having that other big pipe. Okay so I've got the plug is done on this side here and I went ahead and put the pipe sealant or the thread sealant on this and now that is going to be connecting into the um, gas inlet over here. And I'm not sure if I put too much on but I figured if there's more in there that's better than not enough in there so just gonna thread this down and then I'll wipe that uh, edge up once I get it tight. That's looking good to me. I put a little bit of thread sealant on that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this tightened up and then give that time to dry and cure. Give these a little bit of a tighten here. Okay, so this is all done. The new threading points have been resealed here here as well as into the actual gas inlet so this is done um, I'm gonna let that dry for a while because that threading is is still kind of like pliable and moist so I think I'm gonna work on um, the drain outlet and run the pipe down and out to here I went ahead and cut the um, outlet off at the wall because it's gonna need to all be redone so I'll probably just come straight across and then up all right, so I'm just using an anger, angle grinder to cut my uh, PVC pipe here. And I basically just got my piece here and here. So I'm just kind of getting it all mocked up. And I'm going to mark it where I want it to be cut. And I'm just going to leave this pipe kind of at a little bit of a downward angle so the water wants to run towards the house, into the house. So that's pretty good. I'm going to take probably a little bit more out of this so I can get a little bit more of an angle. But you guys get the idea. Using plumber tape, plumber's tape for all of our joints. Um, I just ran out and I still have a lot of joints left to do. But we'll get this uh, upper joint into the top of the water tank through the drain outlet. And we can at least torque this down, get this part finished up. All right, so I've got all my mock cuts done, and you guys can see um, I've got a little bit of a downward slope, probably like, I don't know, three degrees, so the water, as it overflows, will easily drain up and out. I'm gonna go ahead and use my 
PVC sealant, which I've got here. And I'll have links in the description of all this stuff down below if you want to order it from Amazon. Otherwise, just swing by Lowe's and Home Depot. You guys can, you know, piece all this stuff together. Let's stick the pieces together. Let them dry. Let's finish up this last one here. Then we can move on to the water expansion tank and get the water lines in. You guys can see that I probably put too much PVC cement on there, but uh, my opinion is better to have more than not enough. And uh, yeah, we'll just let that dry and that should be good. So you guys can kind of see from a distance that there's definitely a downward angle, which that's what I wanted. So as it overflows and comes down, it can easily run to the edge of the house. Any reason there was too much pressure in the tank, this relief valve opens and you'll see the water coming out like this. And we can also see that while testing these joints here after this is had time to dry a week later, that I've got no leaks at the elbow or at the coupler here, so we're good to go. Okay, so this is the orientation in which all my piping and stuff is gonna go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my plumber's tape on over everything. Getting all this stuff tightened up, I'm just using my vice grips and my um, vice here on my workbench. Part of the old pipe to kind of twist this into position here, which I can't really do with holding the tripod, but you guys are with a camcorder, you guys get the point. Tightened down, everything's torqued as tight as I can get it. I put about eight. Uh, wrap, wraps or eight layers of the Teflon tape around all that threading. Now we're going to come up to the top of the water tank and this side here is going to thread onto this. So I'll do that and then I'll catch back up with you here in a second. This is all nice and tight. This is in the right spot. I'm gonna go ahead, and this is the hot water output side here. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this. So that's slightly threaded on. We're gonna go ahead and this is the cold water input. So we're gonna go ahead and put this into the tank. And then with this little uh, joint here, when we get the thermal or the, uh, the water expansion tank that just goes on here and that helps regulate the pressure inlet to the water tank. And if there's any overpressurization, it comes out of the drain valve and out of the side of the wall. These have rubber seals on the inside so you don't want to over and damage the seal and just kind of snugging it down. I put Teflon tape over the threading. I wasn't quite sure if I needed it, but I didn't see why it would uh, affect its ability not to seal, so I just put it on anyway. Here's a good look at everything. Water comes out of the wall, which is the on sources here. So it comes up out of the wall into here, tees off. This is the pressure uh, relief slash regulation, helps regulate the water pressure. Um, comes into the water tank. You can see it down below, it comes up and out into your house. But these are all the connections, all the fittings. You guys can see what they look like. Everything's tightened down. Go ahead and put my foam covers back over the piping. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the water and let's uh, make sure we don't have any leaks. Here we go. You guys, you guys wish me good luck here. It's my first water heater install. Oh. 
open this valve as well. Here comes our water into the tank. And what we're looking for here is we don't want any anything coming out. So I'm not seeing any leaks here. This looks good. This looks good. You can feel the cold water. No leaks here. This looks good. So yeah. Seems like we're uh, spot on. Okay, I've got my venting on. My venting doesn't quite fit exactly the way it used to before because the water heater sits in a different position. So I'm gonna have to get up, buy a shorter uh, piece of piping because they have male and female connectors and they can't just be cut and put back together. Um, but I'm gonna use this just for tonight and then go to the store tomorrow to get this finished up. Um, but yeah, got the uh, foam kind of cut back away from the exhausting so there's not any touching. I don't want any melting. And uh, at this point, let's go ahead and turn the gas on. I don't see or smell any gas leaks here. I'm gonna get a little water and soap and spray it over these connections to double check it. A bit of spray bottle with uh, some soapy water and spray it on these inputs. See if I get any sign of uh, a leak, which I'm not. No bubbling, no smell, sign of gas. And one other thing you guys can do if you want to um, just protect yourself to make sure you have no carbon monoxide is just get a carbon monoxide detector and stick it out in the garage. I can just put it on this outlet right behind the fridge, which is something I'm gonna probably order just to make sure that uh, my family's safe, of course. All right, so these are the instructions. We're gonna turn the dial up to very hot. We're gonna hold it down for 90 seconds, and then we're gonna press the ignite button 10 times. From there, the status light should come on. It should come on. Um, if it's no status light, it didn't ignite. If there's a blink flashing, um, that means you got um, ignition. So let's give that a shot. All right, so this goes up to very hot. I'm gonna hold that for 90 seconds and click this 10 times. So this says you press and hold, press and hold the knob in the pilot position until, and press the igniter button until the pilot light, release the knob. So I can hear it uh, running now, and we've got a status light. So it took me probably 20 clicks or so for that to light up. And I'm just gonna set it on the, right around, around the low. Let's let it heat up and we'll see how that feels. But uh, anyway guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and smash the thumbs up. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you guys thought. It was a pretty simple project. Um, I pretty much spent all day working on this, so I started at like 10.30 this morning and it's like 6 o'clock at night, so it took me like 8 hours including removal, installation, and going to the store, going out to lunch, and just kind of farting around, but I was able to get it done, and I'm not a professional plumber or anything like that, I'm just a, an everyday dude who likes going hands-on and doing stuff myself to save money, so um, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have owned one of these Ream um, water heaters, um, let me know what you guys think. My brother-in-law has been a plumber for about 20 years and he highly recommends this brand. That's why I bought it. So I'm just going to follow my normal maintenance and uh, drain it like twice a year and hopefully she lasts for a while. So I reused the uh, insulation foam that was on the 
cold water inlet, put some electrical tape around it just to kind of clean it up. And then I put the thicker foam that came with the uh, water heater um, over the water outlet pipe into the house. Um, figured this would just help keep it a little bit warmer and keep it from losing heat. And then I just trimmed it back around here. There's not going to be any contact with the exhaust venting because I don't want the foam to get hot and be melted. Okay, so we have hot water, everything's fully heated up, and I wanted to do a quick test of the water temperature. So just over 117 degrees, which on the low, the lowest of the hot settings I think is more than adequate and sufficient for my family of five. We do a lot of laundry, we take lots of showers, and this 50 tank water heater in the last week of owning it with both either myself taking a shower or my kids taking a shower, we have plenty of water for more than a 15 minute shower with two people showering at once. So yeah, I'd give the uh, hot water tank heater a thumbs up. Once your installation and everything is done, that you check all your um, connection points here at all these pipe joints. Make sure that there's no water leaking anywhere coming into the tank as well as the lines coming out of the tank. Um, once that you know is, inspection is done, you're pretty much good to go. And I probably continue to check it within like the first few hours and few days of operation. And uh, that'll be it for today's video, guys. If you like it, the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below for more content in the future, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.